In this video, I'll show you how I made the sewing machine mats. It has a patchwork panel and matching bias binding around the edge. Here's a list of all the fabric you'll need to make your mat. Start by taking your scrap piece of fabric. It doesn't matter what this fabric looks like because no one's going to see it, it's just scrap. My scrap piece is a little bit longer than I needed, but that doesn't matter. I've used seven pieces of fabric on my panel, but use as many as you want or as little as you want. They don't have to be five by three inches, they can be a bit longer or a bit shorter depending on what you have, just as long as they're longer than your scrap piece. So take your first strip of fabric and place it on top of the scrap piece of fabric on the edge. If your fabric is patterned, then make sure the pattern is facing up. Take your second strip of fabric and place that on top of the first piece at an angle. This gives it the wonky effect. If this fabric is patterned as well, make sure it is right sides together with the piece underneath. So place it at an angle and sew down this line. Make sure that your top piece of fabric is on top of the first strip and not on the scrap side, otherwise this won't work. Next you want to take your iron, this little one's really handy for this, and you want to fold back the top piece and press. And it's as simple as that. Then you want to take your next strip. I've alternated colours of mine, but you can do yours as you please. And I'm just following the same process. So right sides together, placing on top of the top strip at an angle, and then sewing down the line. Take your iron again, fold back the top piece and press. So keep repeating this process until your scrap piece is completely full of little pieces of fabric. Put them at all different angles, it gives a nice wonky effect, but you can do your straight if you want. And like I said, my scrap piece was a bit too long, so I've just trimmed down the edge of it. So now you've got all your strips sewn to the scrap, you're going to want to trim back the edges so that it's nice and square. and this is the panel you end up with. Now you want to take your top piece of fabric. I've given you the measurements at the start, but this was me just working out what size I wanted my mat. You can do the same if you want. So once you've got the right size that you want, place the panel on top of the piece, right sides together, and sew along the edge.
and you have a lovely straight line, look at that. Now take your second piece of fabric and do the same thing, so place it right sides together but this time on top of the panel. Line up the edge and sew down the line. And that's the top finished. It's so pretty. Now for the back. So I've just taken a piece of fabric and trimmed it to the same size as the top. You'll also need a piece of wadding that's the same size as the back. I'm using their bosal for this. So I've just cut that to the same size as the back as well. And then you're going to want to fuse that onto the backing fabric if you're using fusible interfacing. Press, press, press. Lovely. And I'm just trimming back the edges of mine because I can't cut straight. So turn the back over and then place the top of your mat on top. I'm just going to spray this in place with some 505 spray, just so it doesn't move. Now I wanted my bias binding to match the colours of the mat, so I've made my own from this canvas fabric, but you can use any binding you want. So just go ahead and attach the bias binding to the edge of the mat. I'm going from back to front so that my sew lines are nice and neat. Make sure the edges of your bias binding are folded back on themselves to create a nice finish. So what you want to do is sew it down the crease line until you get to about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Once you get a quarter of an inch from the edge, you want to stop and take it out of your machine. So now you want this line to carry on down the side. So you're going to turn it around, line up that side and make sure it's square. So this top bit is square with the top and the side is lined up with the side. I hope that makes sense. And then carry on sewing down the crease line. Quarter of an inch from the edge. Stop, take it out of the machine, twist, and then carry on sewing. It can be fiddly, but just take your time with it. When you get to the end of the bias binding, 
fold it back on itself to create a flush edge. So I've got a gap because I didn't do enough bias binding, so I'm just going to take an extra piece and attach that on top. Don't worry about folding the edges over on this because you won't see the edges. So I'm just trimming this piece down. It's a bit longer than I need, but that's okay. And then I'm going to sew it as I was before, making sure it overlaps the two edges that I've left open. Trim back the excess, if you have any, and that's that. So now you want to wrap the bias binding over to the front and clip in place with the corners. As you do it, you'll see they kind of fold neatly into a nice little corner. That's Vienna helping me out there. <laughs> She thinks she helps. There we go. <laughs> okay, so once that's all pinned in place, you just wanna sew as close as you can to the edge of the bias binding. And Vienna's distracted me, so I was changing my top thread so it matched the bias binding as well. So yeah, so as close as you can to the edge to make it look nice and seamless. And go all the way around as straight as you can. And that's the mat finished. Mitered corners and all. Mum will be proud. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please let me know if you make it yourself. I'd love to see your pictures. Don't forget to like the video and please subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks. See you next time.